Should men be concerned about accidentally harassing a female coworker? That's the subject of an article I'm looking at here. As always, happy to send you a link to any article that or case that I might talk about here. And this this is about a situation that we've talked about before, which is that sometimes men may be concerned about working with a female coworker. Uh, for fear of being accused of harassment, uh, and particularly maybe more so since Me Too. The point of this video is not to discuss whether that's a valid concern or not. Uh, we've talked in other videos about strategies for travel arrangements to make sure everything's appropriate and things are less likely to be misinterpreted, trying to alleviate some of those concerns. I do think it's a topic that employers need to be talking about. Uh, with, with male supervisors in particular. Uh, but this article has a little bit different take in the sense that you don't need to be concerned because in order to engage in unlawful harassment because of the severe and pervasive standard, we've talked about multiple times in other videos what a high standard that is for a plaintiff to meet, y you can't harass accidentally. So you shouldn't worry about it so much. And that corporate policies which look pretty much the same for the most part, tend to define lots of little things as harassment that in the case law would not actually be harassment by itself, uh, but corporations want to set the bar low so HR knows about it, can deal with it, which, which I agree with. I think that's a, you do want to set the bar low and deal with small problems rather than bigger problems before they get bigger. Uh, I think this point of view overlooks a couple of things. Number one, that as employers know, as employment lawyers know, not all claims have merit, harassment or otherwise. Many do, some don't, and certainly whether it has merit or not, uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of time. So employers uh, certainly don't want to set a, a high standard uh, and say, oh yes, we can meet that because we know it doesn't really work that way always in, in courts and with civil rights agencies and what have you. Secondly, um, yes, it's certainly true that one reason that you want to set the conduct standard in your policy relatively low so that HR does have an opportunity to address small problems, that, that's one reason. Uh, but another is that any employer I work with would never set what the courts have found is severe and pervasive so as to constitute unlawful harassment, they would never use that standard as what is appropriate workplace behavior. Uh, far below that is what clients I work with uh, where they want to set the bar. So I think this, this article overlooks that, those couple of things. Uh, that said, I think it's an important conversation for employers to be having uh, to protect themselves both from harassment-related liability and other kinds of discrimination liability, to be having conversations about male supervisors and strategies for interacting with all kinds of employees in a way that avoid and, and minimize problems. And this is an interesting point of view and I think something uh, worth discussing with your team.